All right, so we've been talking about uh, the fact that at different orientations, the stresses are a little bit different, right? For the last one, we were kind of curious about, hey, what are the stresses at the orientation that the grains of this wood are? Uh, and so sometimes, um, you know, an object doesn't fail in its normal way, in its normal orientation. It might fail at a different orientation. If the stresses are different at different orientations, then it might be helpful to find the orientation that has the maximum of these stresses. All right, and so that, that gets us to the principal stresses, um, and we'll, we'll talk about that later, the maximum in-plane shear stress. But these are the, uh, the special orientations that have maximum stresses. All right, so <clears throat> we'll talk about... First, the uh, principal stresses. So let's say an orientation exists, and we'll, we're going to call it theta p. An orientation exists at which the normal stresses, the normal stresses are at a maximum and minimum, are at a maximum and minimum. And it just so happens, well, not just so happens, but and at this orientation, <clears throat> the shear stress is zero. And this is the principal plane or the principal orientation, principal plane or the principal orientation where we have the principal max and min normal stresses. Okay, and we could find that. We could take our, whoops, sorry, we could take our uh, old equations. And if we want to find the maximum of an equation at, at any theta, if we want to take our equation through all the different orientations it could possibly have and find the maximum at any orientation, we would just take that equation, that, that equation, our, sorry, our sigma x prime equation, and what? Take its derivative with respect to theta, d sigma x d theta, set that equal to zero, <clears throat> and, and that would be our maximum or minimum. <clears throat> so if we did that, if we took that equation, set it equal to zero, this is what we would get. Two things. We would get that the tangent of 2 theta p is tau, sig tau xy over sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2. So that, that equation right there is how we can find theta p. To find theta p, the principal, principal orientation. The orientation that has a maximum and minimum uh, stresses. So use that equation, tangent of 2 theta p, equals tau xy over sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2. Use that to, to find the theta p. And this equation has two roots. It has two answers. Sorry, actually I think this equation has two roots. <clears throat> and so those roots will be our stresses. So the principal stresses, sigma 1 and sigma 2, so these are the principal stresses, these are the maximum normal stresses, the maximum that we will ever get, we'll never get above this maximum, never will get below this max minimum, sorry, are <clears throat> sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 plus and minus, so one answer is going to be the plus, one answer is going to be the minus. So plus and minus of 
square root sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2. Sorry, this whole thing, this whole thing squared plus tau xy squared. Take the square root of that whole thing. It's really almost like an a squared plus b squared. Take the square root. Uh, and so... So these are my, my two answers, my two principal stresses. One of these is going to be the maximum. One of these is going to be the minimum. It, it, obviously, the one that's larger is the maximum. The one that's smaller is the minimum. <clears throat> sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 plus or minus the square root of sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2, that quantity squared plus tau xy, that quantity squared. Take the square root. That equation is on our formula sheet. Don't have to memorize this. We just have to plug in our old tau, our old sigmas, our old sigmas. Plug in the old ones, and there we've got our um, new principal stresses. All right, we've got our new principal stresses. So <clears throat> we will we will get a new orientation and new stresses. So this would be our old sigma x, sigma y. Our old tau xy. All right, so there's there's an orientation that exists. Maybe it is this angle theta p. Po if theta p comes out positive, if that theta p comes out positive, it was counterclockwise. If that theta p comes out negative, we, we needed to orient it clockwise. <clears throat> so this would be the new... Sigma, I'll call it in green. This would be the the new sigma. I'll call it in, uh, let's see, so this is my new sigma x prime, my new sigma y prime. The problem is, though, I don't know if my 2 needs to go here or there. Is the sigma 1 my sigma y or is the sigma 1 my sigma x? So, Sometimes you can visualize it, and you can see if it's closest to the, um, <clears throat> if my orientation did not change by very much. If theta p is a very small angle, then your orientation will be kind of similar right here. But, and there are other ways to do this, but to figure out which stress... goes on which face this is what I like to do just plug theta P into those original stress transformation equations and you'll get the stress on the x face. Okay, so just plug in theta p and you will get either a sigma 1 or a sigma 2. This is a great way to double check your answer. This is a great way to double check your answer. So <clears throat> you get theta p by using this tangent. You get sigma 1 and sigma 2 by using that equation. Then take theta p, plug it into our stress transformation equations from way back Plug, the, plug theta p in right here, theta p and theta p, and then you'll get the stress that goes on that x face, and it should be one of the two principal stresses that you, uh, that you just calculated. You just calculated, okay? All right, so let me reiterate. There's an orientation. We're not, we're, we're, we, haven't, we haven't talked about the maximum shear stress. There's an orientation where it, that has maximum normal stresses. And it's actually when one face is the maximum, the other is the minimum. That might kind of make sense, but if when, when your, you know, sigma X is a maximum, your sigma Y is a minimum or vice versa. And at this orientation that have the maximum normal stresses, you're going to have a zero shear stress. You're going to have a zero shear stress. So do not draw. Don't try to draw. If, if I ask you to draw something, don't try to calculate. Don't try to draw. What is tau at the principal orientation? Tau 
is zero. Another way to double check your answer if, is if you plug in theta p into our tau transformation equation. If, if we plugged in theta p into here, if we plugged in theta p into here, we would get a very, very, very small. We should get zero, but probably because of rounding, we won't get exactly zero. Um, but you'll get a very, very small tau. Maybe just to kind of remind you, oh, oh yeah, the tau at theta p was zero. Okay, so at the principal orientation theta p, you've got maximum normal stresses and zero shear stress. How can you find it? Just, just plug in, just use this tangent equation to find theta p. Use these principal, this principal stress equation to find sigma 1 and sigma 2. And then if you have to draw it, if you have to tell me which face which of these is on, then you need to plug in theta p to the original stress transformation equation, and that will show you which one of those goes onto this sigma x right here. Okay? But again, we're, just, we're really just taking those equations and plugging in my tau, my sigma x, my sigma y. Okay?